Okay, we're going to talk about a few forms of the line. The first one that I want to talk about is point-slope form. All right, before I get started, uh, let me tell you guys, on the exam, I will not mandate that you use one form or the other. It is up to you whether you want to use point-slope form or slope-intercept form when it comes to writing the equation of the line. Okay, so let's, given that, let's go over point-slope form. A function f, again, is going to be a linear function if we're in the form y equals mx plus b, or f of x equals mx plus b. You will see me review this over and over and over again. This is our linear function. Okay, and here is our point-slope form. So, again, we have our letter m to designate slope. Okay, and I'm going to be passing through some point, x1, y1, and I'm going to use this point in the formula. All right, so when I use this formula, as you'll see on the next slide, I will put a number here, whatever is the y-coordinate of the point. I'll put a number here, whatever is my given slope, and I will put a number here, whatever is the x-coordinate of my point and then I will do a little bit of algebra to end up with the equation of a line. All right, so let's find the equation of the line through the point negative 2, 4 having slope negative 3. All right, so I have x1 is negative 2, y1 is 4, and the slope m is negative 3. And again, guys, this is just that plug and chug math. I'm going to plug my y1, my m, and my x1 into my formula. Uh, I am telling you to be careful here just with your double negative. So when I substitute in negative 2, I'm using parentheses. Okay, um, so I'm going to clean up that double negative first. And now I'm to the point where I wanted to start solving for y or getting y by itself. And so I'm going to distribute the negative 3 on the right side first. And my last step is to add 4 to both sides. And I get the equation of my line y equals negative 3x minus 2. All right, let's try it now where we have two points. I have uh, my line going through negative, two, negative 3, 2, and 2, negative 4. So what am I going to do first? All right, I need a point, which I have 2, uh, but I also need slope. And so the first thing we're going to have to do here is find the slope. And so I use my y1, or my y2 minus y1, all divided by my x2 minus x1, and I get a slope of negative 6 fifths. All right, so I'm going to use my slope, and I can use either point I want uh, to, to use the point-slope form to write the equation of the line. Okay, so I'm going to use the first point, so I'm going to let x1 be negative 3, y1 be 2, and I have my slope from the previous slide of negative 6 fifths, and I'm just plugging my way through this point-slope form. Note, I plug in my y1, all right, so I plug in my 2, my positive 2, so y minus 2, plug in my slope, negative 6 fifths, and I plug in my x1 of negative 3, and again, because it's negative, I use parentheses around it just so I'm careful not to pick up a sign error. First thing I'm going to do is make this x plus 3, and I'm able to distribute the negative 6 fifths. So I do minus 6 fifths x minus 3 times negative 6 fifths. And for those of you that are curious how the heck we got negative 18 fifths, if I have negative 6 fifths times 3 over 1, remember we multiply fractions straight across, and so I'm getting negative 18 in the numerator, or negative 6 times 3, all divided by 5. Okay, so that's where the negative 18 fifths came from. And then my last step here to get y by itself is to add 2 to both sides, and I could say, voila, magic, we have negative 8 fifths as our y-intercept. All right, but how did we really do it? Okay, so here I want to add 2 to negative 18 fifths. Okay, and I know many of you are going to use your TIs and you're then going to get the decimal and convert it back to a fraction, which you certainly can do. All right, but let's talk about how it actually happens. I'm going to change 2 uh, to have a denominator of 5, 
And so 5 times 2 is 10, which gives me this fraction right here. Note, if I reduce this fraction, I get back to 2. All right. Uh, so I have negative 18 fifths plus 10 fifths. And I'm adding straight across in the numerator, so I get negative 8 fifths as my fraction.